everybody. Welcome back to the Water Corner. Change to um, my normal soft food mix. I was told by a friend to try um, putting in some sweet corn. Uh, so I've added some sweet corn to this mix. And then um, somebody else said, How about giving me a bit of carrot? So I've tried that as well. Um, I've only done the carrot for about uh, three weeks, I think. Um, so far, it looks like they're doing some There's never anything left. The sweet corn went straight away, as did all the other food, and I gave it to them. So, um, they obviously like the carrot for some reason, so what we've got now is um, a boiled egg, a grated carrot, um, paramore bite, soaked seed, frozen peas, frozen sweet corn and chopped broccoli. Um, and they get that now that we're into March. I think I can't remember when I up my last video was. I haven't been very well recently, so I'm a bit behind where I wanted to be with the video. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to try and get back to normal, um, try and get the videos coming out. Five o'clock on a Friday, if I can. So, um, but yeah, so into March, and they now get their soft food three times a week. Um, Cocks uh, get hemp three times a week, um, and the hens, hens get niger three times a week. When the hens are in condition and they're, they're laying and shitting on eggs and they're open to being trod, um, I stop giving them the, the niger seed. Um, and then as soon as the hens are actually sitting on eggs, I'll start giving them soft food as well, so they don't want them coming off the nest to eat soft food. So, um, I've got one cock bird that is the one you can hear singing. I'll just show you him now. Um, so this cock bird is, he seems to be the fittest bird in the cage and I go, if I put him towards any hens that are, are close to condition, they immediately um, squat to be trod. I've only actually trod him with two, a clear yellow um, and, and the variegated both buck birds obviously. Um, so he's over two at the moment. He might stay at two, I might put him over a third, I'm not sure yet, I'll have to wait and see. So, um, so yeah, let's get this soft food into the cages um, and we'll get into this week's show. So this is the white variegated hen uh, bred this year and then in the cage above you can see um, the uh, variegated buff uh, cockbird that I brought in. Um, I'm hoping these two are going to get together um, for me. Um, I don't know whether they will or not, but we're going to give it a go. Um, in the cage next door, down here, I don't know if you can see, it's too dark I think, let's just try and see if I can... You can just see there that there's a yellow, self-yellow hen. Uh, she started to build a nest, so it may well be that that I use her as well, but the plan is to use, hopefully, uh, is to get a pair going with um, with these guys, with this um, variegated buff, and I really want to get um, a, 
good line of, of um, allied birds. So these are the uh, these are the targets. So um, I'm going to try video slightly differently uh, from now on. I'm going to try really hard. I know you're all going to laugh because I always say this and I'll never do it. Um, I'm going to try and get the videos a lot shorter, get them condensed down quite a lot. Um, I'm worried that I tend to drone on a little bit, um, which isn't great entertainment for some people. Um, so um, what I wanted to just talk about was um, one of the things I planned on doing this year with the birds was um, to run a cock bird with um, multiple hens. That was what the plan was going to be. Um, but I just feel the more I think about it, because of borders can be a little bit finicky as we know. So one of the things I want to do is try some specific pairings this year uh, and have some specific pairings in the bird room um, rather than just having uh, strike pairs. So for those of you that aren't sure what that means, um, a strike pair is where, oh, I'll say a strike pair is not actually a pair, but a strike mating is where um, you get one cock bird and you introduce them to multiple hens. So typically um, we put the cock bird in a breeder, breeder uh, sorry, in a um, show cage um, and then hang it on the front of the cage where the hen is and um, the cock comes out of his cage as soon as he comes into the, the hen's cage, she squats, he treads, and then you take the cock out and put him back in his cage. Um, now you might do that with two or three um, hens. I know some of the more um, ready breeders, typically like fifes, um, I've heard of some breeders doing it with three. Um, and I think, you know, I've heard of lizard breeders. Um, one of our new um, people that have joined the, the Canary Video fraternity, uh, Tweet Street. Um, he said on his video this week that he's going to try and put a cock bird to four hens. So um, that's only possible with those birds that are already in three breeders. I'm not sure whether you would consider really orders to fall into that category. So I'm not going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to have several, just probably have two pairs, maybe three. Um, and then of my other birds, I'm going to then let them tread multiple hens. So um, I mentioned earlier about this, the clock bird up here. Um, he's been um, ready and, and jumping for quite a while now. So he's already gone across two hens. Um, I might I might put him with a, um, another one yet, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how we go with that. But he's, he's certainly done um, three hens. Uh, sorry, he's certainly done two hens. Um, and they have both laid eggs. So as you can see here, and um, this is a hen, uh, this is a clear hen, and she's sitting on um, four eggs at the moment. They're actually dummy eggs. Uh, they're, not, um, they're not all hers. Um, so I've got her, uh, she was skipped today, she laid a fourth egg today, so it wasn't very blue. For some of those of you that don't know, uh, Keith Ferry mentioned on Matt Elf's Canary Room, that when the canary lays a blue or red in the previous eggs, that shows that that's her last one. So when that happens, you can then set the eggs. Um, my, my clear hen, uh, she's just done uh, four eggs all the same colour, so I'm um, expecting the fourth egg, uh, sorry, the fifth egg tomorrow. So they'll be set. Now what the plan is, or what the plan was, um, was to use um, some bricks and fives for feeders. So behind me, down here, so there we go, so that's one pair. As you can see, nest pole, nest pan is at the front. She's built a nest. Um, this is last year's cockbird with this year's hen. Um, so they've pa pair bonded. I've seen him tread her a few times, uh, feed her quite a lot. Um, so they're pair bonded and nest built. And then next door I've got these guys. You might recognize this cockbird from last year. Um, Nest pump, Nest Pan at the front again, and same with them. I've seen them, um, I've seen him tread her quite a few times. So I was actually hoping that there might have been an egg there today, um, in which case I would have been using those guys to um, set my clear hens eggs under the 
pretend that I just showed you the so, um, stove. But not yet, so we'll see. Hopefully it won't be long. Sorry, as he was singing, I thought I'd just let it carry on with him. So, yeah, so that's my feist, my breed, my feeders. Now, this is the other pair that I've set specifically. Um, this is my blue hen. She's on a black ring, so she's getting on a bit now. She was 2019, so she's five years old. So this really is last saloon. Is that the right saying? Um, it really is the last season that I can hope to get anything from her. Um, and I've got him, got her paired with this uh, variegated yellow cock. Um, so I, I've had him for a couple of years and he hasn't actually raised anything yet, but I don't know if you remember, I made a massive mistake last year and I gave all the cocks um, calcium form. So they were getting calcium um, in their water three times a week, um, which I actually found out can make the cock sterile. So um, that's one of the reasons I didn't do very well last year. Um, so they haven't had any calcium yet at all this year, So, um, nor the hens actually, they've got plenty of uh, mineral grit and cuttlefish. So, um, but I'm hoping that these two, um, they're both from the same genes, where I've got them from, um, they've both got the same genes. So I'm hoping that, as I say, it's the last chance saloon. There, there, I got it right this time. It's last chance saloon for her. Um, so I'm really hopeful that we'll get something. Um, we've got off to a reasonably good start. There's the nest. She's built that over the last couple of days. Um, very attentive. She's, um, she's done it quite quickly. Um, and here's a little bit of footage from this morning. I apologise for the quality of this, but you can just about see that she's um, working the nest um, to get it where she wants it to be. And then she drops onto the edge of the, the nest pan um, and calls the cock to tread. Now, he does a pretty rotten job, doesn't he? Um, and he actually pulls her off the nest. So um, that's not ideal, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got, where I took the slider out, I've got those four perches in here still. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of those out. Um, and then hopefully um, they'll either tread on the floor um, or just tread on a perch rather than the nest, because that's obviously didn't seem to be as stable as We'd like. I don't know if you remember um, last year um, and earlier this year I talked about the donation scheme that I was hoping to run. Um, I didn't get the timing right obviously as we all know now so I'm going to try it again this year and hopefully some breeders will come forward with any boards that they'd like to donate to, to beginners that want to start up. Um, what I have done though is that I was contacted um, by a number of people um, and because of my location um, there's hardly anybody that, that wanted borders in my area but there is somebody who's not a million miles away and he wants to start with borders. Um, his name's Jeff um, so I'm giving him a, um, two pairs so it's a buff hen here and, the, and a clear white um, and they're going with the um, three part stark cockbread that I bred last year. So um, that's those three. And bear with me a second. And there's this cockbird as well um, that he's going as well. So that'll give Jeff two pairs from me. And my friend Malcolm, he's got a pair of borders as well. And um, he's going to donate those as well to Jeff. So Jeff's going to get three, three pairs of borders to start off with. So um, I wish him all the luck in the breeding season for this year. Hopefully you might get something this year. Um, you never know. Um, it might take the birds a year to settle, but let's keep our fingers crossed for Jeff. I've had quite a few people ask me about the cameras that I use uh, in the bird room. So I thought I'd just do a quick clip showing you what they are. Um, as you can see, I'm trying something new this year. So this is the single, uh, the cage with the um, buff hen in um, and I've got a very small camera that I've mounted right at the top of the cage. So this is the view that you can get from that camera. Um, 
and obviously what I'm hoping you can see the, egg, the dummy eggs here. Obviously what I'm hoping for is that um, if we get chicks, we're going to get a really great view um, of those chicks, of them being fed and them generally growing. So um, they're called Tapo cameras. I forget the model number. If, you, if you'd like to know, let me uh, just drop me a comment and I can tell you what the exact brand is. So um, I've got one of those in that cage there. And bear with me, so I hope you don't get seasick. And then over here with that other buff hen that I showed you before, um, I've got another one. This is in the wire cage. Um, and this is what that view looks like. And this is really encouraging, actually, just quick interlude. Um, well, after I finished filming the last segment, um, one of the cocks in the room started singing, and this, this is my best buff hen, and she started squatting. So I thought, well, I'll just try putting the, the cock in with her and see what happens. And she's, she's called him three times to try and mate her. He hasn't quite got it right yet, but I'm hoping, this is a really good sign, and I'm hoping that this might mean that in the not too distant future they might they might tread properly. So yeah, so going back to this one, this was that the other one. Um, I don't know if you can see just on the edge there. It's got an SD card, um, so I can um, record everything overnight um, and then play it back in the morning. So if you don't have the SD card in, um, all the all the camera does is give you real time footage. So um, that's what that one is. Um, and then, so there's two of those, and then, I hope you don't get seasick again, please bear with me. And then I've got three of these. These are called tapos, again. Um, I've got three of these. Um, one's placed at this part of the bird room, so it gets this whole bank of wire cages in view. And this is a quick shot of what that looks like. And then I've got my second camera. This is mounted right in the middle of the bird room. So this gives me this view of the bank of cages um, all across the, the, the um, back of the shed there. And I'm gonna try and do this really quickly. And then in the aviary, um, I've got another camera in there. Now, in the aviary at the moment, all I've got is two five hens um, that um, desperately want to breed, but um, I haven't got a cock for them, so they're going to have to lump it. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, run through where we are. Um, that's the yellow, clear yellow hen sitting on, on eggs, or dummy eggs. Um, nest built from my pair, my blue allied and the variegated yellow. Um, this was the last bird that was bred last year. She's got a, a nest pan in there and some nesting material. She did, she's been picking up and playing with it but um, hasn't actually started nesting yet. Um, a variegated buff hen. I quite like the look of this, this bird. She's got quite a nice shape, maybe a little bit on the small side but um, she's actually built three nests but um, I offered the cockbird, actually it's this cockbird, the, um, one of the ones that I bought in last year, variegated yellow. When I put him in the cage with her, she just ignores him. So she's obviously not, whoops, sorry, she's obviously not breeding fit yet. Um, but um, hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, this is another hen that I bred last year. Now, unfortunately, she's sitting on clear eggs. Um, it's been a bit weird because what happened is that she went from doing nothing, just hopping about the cage, not showing any interest in anything. Um, and then I saw her chewing a little bit of bedding. So I thought, well, I'll just put a little bit of um, nesting material in and see what happens. So I did that and she, she played with it a lot. So I put the nest pan in and lots of nesting material. She built a nest that day. And then when I came in the next morning, there was an egg in it. Um, so she'd actually showed no, it wasn't like really ultra fast. 
So it's a bit disappointing really, but I've got to let her sit for 14 days now and then I'll take them away. Um, I've already mentioned the variegated hen. Um, here she is. Now I'm just hovering here because she's just started pulling nesting material today. You can see there's quite a lot on the floor. Um, now this is just today. So I'm hoping that's the signal that she's uh, not far away. And there's the yellow hen that I mentioned earlier. Um, she's got a nest built. So what I will try and do is every day I'm going to put the buff cock in with her just to see what happens. Um, just in case she does credit. As soon as this um, variegated white hen is ready and fit, then they'll be going together and I'll, I'll use them as a, as a pair. So that's those guys. Um, I'm running out of space, sorry. Um, down here we've got a green, self green hen. She's made a nest. Um, wanting to see what happens with her. Variegated buff hen. Um, she's been mated by that yellow cock that I've shown you several times. Played her first egg this morning, so we're off and running with her. Uh, three parts dark buff hen. Um, she's already built one nest. Um, I put the cock in with her. Uh, and nothing happened, she just ignored him. Um, I've done that four or five times and nothing's happened, so she's obviously not breeding fit, so I've destroyed the nest and put it back into the basket, and she's rebuilt. So hopefully that one won't be, um, she won't be too far away. Does everybody remember Albert? So this was the, um, the first border that I ever bred, um, and she was nicknamed Albert by my soon-to-be daughter-in-law Beth because she thought he looked like Albert Einstein with his um, tufts of fluff on the top of his head. Um, she's been a bit under the weather the last um, sometime this week so I've actually had her out. Hold on a second. So that's my the best yellow cock bird that I've got. So I'll, I'll come back to him in a second. Um, so yeah, so back to Albert. Whoops, sorry. Getting my crutch stuck on the tripod. Um, yeah, so she was a bit under the weather. You can see she's just picking up a little bit. So um, hopefully she'll be coming into condition soon. But I have had her indoors two or three days this week. She was all huddled up and not looking too healthy and I was actually worried I was going to lose her but she seems to be okay. Um, I want to pair her if I can with the yellow cock bird that I've just shown you because she is 50% got the same genes as him, 50% shared genes so um, that might produce um, something quite nice with any luck. And then I've got a buff variegated hen um, and she's shown no interest yet either so you can see I've got a peg there with a few bits of nesting material but she's not bothered she's not interested yet so reedlings are still in this um triple breeder that i've set up in the greenhouse um you can see they're very flighty still obviously i think that i don't know whether that's the nature actually um any of you um guys that keep reedlings i'd be interested to know if this is typical behavior so i know whether they're just behaving normally or whether this they're a bit stressed so um i just i just put the i just put my phone i've run out of battery on my ipad um i've just put my phone um on top of the white cage looking down on the obviously looking down on the soft food so what i'm hoping is that we might get a shot of uh, of the birds going to the soft food Getting close, there's the hen in now. She's got something, don't know what it was. I don't know if you can, I don't know if it's actually on the picture or whether it's just when they're on the soft head that you can see them. So I'm sorry, this is probably a little bit boring footage, but let's see if we can get a shot of them getting down to the soft food and moving out. I'm actually going to step away from the bird from the cage for a little while and see what happens.
Yeah, so hopefully um, some reasonable footage of the, of the beardies feeding. So not too much has changed with these guys since the, the first video that I did that you've seen. Oh, that was a nice close-up of, of the hen and here she is again. Um, I think they really want that soft food, so I'm probably being a bit of a pain now. Um, yeah, so um, I've not been too well, as I said earlier in this video on the canary, so we're quite a long way behind with the aviary than we wanted to be. So um, I'm hoping to get some progress with that this weekend. Um, I'll be standing by with clipboard um, issuing my instructions um, to poor old Jane who will uh, be assembling it for me. So um, with any luck by the weekend they might actually be in the uh, in the aviary but if it's not by the end of this weekend hopefully it'll be early next next week that they'll go in. So um, absolutely fascinating little things. I can't wait to get them in the aviary. Um, I've been told a few different tips about these guys. Um, so uh, one of the things that I'm going to do, thanks Gareth, um, is get some bamboo canes and stick them in a pot or something in the um, in the aviary so that they can, when well, they're actually on the bamboo canes it look, and moving up and down them, actually looks like they're in the natural environment where they, where they use reeds. So um, I'm going to get some canes and put those in. Um, I have bought some plants um, to go in the aviary, which hopefully will benefit them. So um, we'll just have a quick look at those now. I'm sorry about the wind noise, folks. Um, I'll just do this quickly so you can see. So this is the bamboo that I've bought. Um, it's a clump forming bamboo. Um, so, and it's quite quick growing. So it may not give them what they want this year, which is why Gareth's idea of um, putting the canes up is really good. So um, I'll, um, I'll get, that in the aviary as soon as it's um, as soon as it's ready, uh, and then also um, because they like bulrushes, um, which forms one of their staple feeds, um, I've got some bulrushes as well. So just a couple. Um, there's two in this pot, um, and then I've got three in this pot. So um, they're not showing much signs of life yet. Hopefully it won't be long. Um, but then they'll go in there as well. So the bulrushes, um, if they do go to seed a flower this year and get that distinctive top on, um, the birds will at least have um, some natural food um, to eat. So fingers crossed for those. This is where my uh, Billy Reading Avery is going to go. You can see I've got it marked out there in bricks. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just run, um, oh, I say I here, the royal eye. Um, uh, Jane will just run um, some mortar inside those bricks um, and you can see leading up on the shed there that's the base um, that's going to go down on the mortar. It's already on a nice firm ground there with those slabs um, so that'll go down um, onto that. It's just CLS timber that I've treated we've got some screws in there as well just to help it fit in with the mortar um, so yeah so that's where the ovary is going to go so far we've got some panels built um with any luck next time i show you this the aviary will be up even if the birds aren't in it i'm hoping it'll be a bit further progressed than we are now so yes yeah, so that's where my aviary is going to go um just bear with me for a sec so this is my canary room as you can see um and then this is where the aviary is going to go so it's going to go next to it. So from my seat in the conservatory, um, I should be able to see them in there quite happily. Um, so fingers crossed for that. The back of the aviary is going to be a fence panel. That'll be painted black as well, so hopefully it'll show the birds up nicely. Um, I'm sorry about the wind noise, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'll have um, a black fence panel on the back. Be a safety porch on that end as well. Um, but yeah, so I'll show you the progress on that next time. So that's it for um, my little snapshot on the on the reedlings. There's not a, a huge amount to cover on these guys yet. Um, I'm hoping to get some more video going um, when when they're in the aviary. I'm going to get one of those cameras um, again so we can go outside. I obviously I just can't spend the time with them as much as I'd like, but I really like the idea of having a camera in there that I can move about and. Um, 
maybe if, if and when they do go to nest I can get a, get the camera on that and, and we can see how they get on so um, stay tuned for that um, but in the meantime that's um, that's the little snap on on the bearded weedlings uh, something I just wanted to mention was um, the nest felts. Um, I did a short a week or two ago um, where I said that I'd got the carbolic soap prepared and I did think it was a bit daft just putting that up as a short and not following it up but because I hadn't been well um, I hadn't done that so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a few of the videos that I did last year where I trimmed the birds, um, my soft food mix, how I prepare it um, and what I do about nest preparation. I'm going to put them up as um, how-tos. I'm going to create a new playlist called how-tos and I'm going to put them in there. So um, if you're interested in, in um, what I'm doing with each of those different things, you can just go straight to those short videos. So, um, But what I wanted to say was um, I had some interesting feedback and interesting replies on the use of carbolic soap. Um, a few folks have said, waste of time, don't bother with it, doesn't work. Um, I don't know what, you know, I don't know how people have been using carbolic soap. So if you do have a look at that, Sean, you can see that I put it on quite thick. Um, all I can say is that my nest felts stick really tight in the terracotta nest pan. Um, and I haven't had any mites. Now, the mite treatment I give the birds, they have S76. Um, every month, two days every month at the start of the month. At the start of the year actually I'll give them the full treatments if they've never had it before and then they get it, after that they get it um, two days every month and then um, they get a front line as well so um, three times at the beginning of the year, twice in January uh, once at the beginning of February they get front lines and then they get front lines when we come back and the show season's finished they all get front lines then I'll do again um, in December, I do two treatments of frontline then. So um, I've never had any mites, so I don't know whether it's the carbolic soap in the nest pan that's, that's preventing it. Um, I, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to keep using it. If nothing else, it helps the felt stick, stick to the terracotta pan really well. So if nothing else, I'm going to use it for that. But um, I know some people try Exol and other combinations of other products um, to, tr to treat their nest pans. Um, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because it works for me. Um, so please, obviously, don't be necessarily directed by what I'm doing. Find your own way. So that's it for this week. Um, I've tried to keep it a bit shorter. I hope I've done that. We'll see. I haven't looked at the time yet. So when I do the final edit, we'll see whether it, it comes out shorter or not. So um, it'd be great to hear any feedback and any comments that you've got. Um, I'm going to try and do a few shorts as well. Um, add them into the mix. So um, I'll, I'll start putting them up. Um, let me know if you're interested in that in the comments. A lot of people prefer to uh, direct mail me um, at the board corner or at my personal email address that a lot of folks have got, or indeed using Messenger. So get in touch, whichever method you want. Um, it's great to hear from you. I love getting the feedback, I love the comments. It really is nice to know that people are watching the video. Um, I really desperately need a subscriber today because I've got the sign of the devil. I've got 666 subscribers. So, come on, someone, please give me that extra one so that I can get to 667 at least today. Uh, smash the thumbs up and um, click notify so that you're notified when a new video comes out. Um, thanks for watching. Keep on birding and I'll see you in the next one.